in those times, if we're not careful, we will walk away from the very thing that we need to stay anchored to. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ. But there's good news this morning in this scripture. Even on the road to Emmaus, even on the road to hopelessness, even on the road to not even having relationship with God anymore, even on the hopeless road, Jesus is there. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. See, even though these men, like sometimes we do, was walking away from Jerusalem, walking away from their peace, my Bible said that Jesus joined them on the road to Emmaus. How many of you know that even in the hard times, when we've turned our back on our peace, when we're walking away from Jerusalem, when things have gone wrong and it just doesn't seem like that things are ever going to be right, when we're in that condition, when we are down into those areas of depression and hopelessness, Jesus Christ is right there and will join us there. He will pick you up even from that place and set your feet on the solid rock. The Bible said that he walked with them on the road to Emmaus. I'm glad to report to you this morning that it doesn't matter how hopeless it looks in your life. The Lord will walk with you. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll go all the way with you. Even to you. See, even on the road to Emmaus, and even in Emmaus, they finally arrived in Emmaus, and guess what? He sat down and had a meal with them. When they were at their lowest point, and when, when they were at their lowest ebb, when, when everything was hopeless, they had given up, they had sat down, they had gone to Emmaus. The Bible said he sat down with them, and he broke bread with them. Glory to God. Folks, you've got to realize, the Lord I serve, He doesn't run out when the going gets tough. Amen? He doesn't run out when the going gets rough. He'll be right there. All you have to do is turn to Him and speak to Him. He will talk with you, and He will walk with you, and He will commune with you, even in the dark hour. But Jesus asked them, verse 17, of this scripture, a very important question. Why don't you look at it for a minute? And he said unto them, What manner of communications are these that you have one with another as you walk and are sad? How many of you know that's a timeless question? What kind of conversations are we having today when we are discouraged and when we are facing adversity in our life? What are we saying? about that. How many of you know your words control your destiny? Oh, yes. Amen. Your attitude controls your altitude. Amen. Yes. So what are we talking about? Are we talking faith out of our mouth or are we talking discouragement out of our mouth? Jesus asked them, he says, what is this communication that you're saying out of your mouth and you're walking here and you're saying what are the words that you and I speak during the hard times? It's easy to praise God in the good times. Amen. Bert sings that song, God on the Mountain. And it's easy to praise God when you're on the mountain, but when you're in the valley, what's coming out of your mouth? That's what he was asking them. Are they words of faith? Or do we speak words of fear and hopelessness and doubt. <coughs> they were saying things like we thought he was the Messiah. Yeah. We had hopes that he would resurrect or rescue Israel. <laughs> that he would become the next <laughs> king of Israel. But he's dead and it's been three days. You see the doubt in that? You see the frustration and the discouragement. Although they had heard the teaching, they were still discouraged and they were speaking that out of their mouth. I have to ask you 
you this morning, have you walked away from your peace? Have you walked away from your Jerusalem, the teaching of peace? Is turmoil filling your life because of disappointment, because of discouragement, because of things that you had thought were going to go one way, went another way, and, and they didn't turn out the way you expected them to? I'm talking to some people here that have had this experience for years. When you look at your future this morning, do you see fear and hopelessness or defeat and sorrow or joy and peace up to me? Have you given up? Have you walked away from your teaching of peace? Have you walked away from Jerusalem? These men were leaving Jerusalem. They were going to Emmaus. I guess my question this morning is in my heart of hearts that I have to ask you is, are you on the road to Emmaus as well? Notice with me, if you will, two final verses in the scripture. I didn't read these, but I want to read them to you now. Verses 32 and 33. Notice to what it says, because what happened was that Jesus walked with them all the way to Emmaus. And Bible scholars tell us that was about seven miles. That was a pretty long hike, amen? And they went all the way, and he went with them all the way. And I told you a minute ago that when he got there, he sat down and had a meal with them. But listen to what it says. Let's look at verse 30. And it came to pass. As he said it, meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to them. You notice in the trying times, he's still supplying their need. He's still blessing them. You notice that? And their eyes were open. And they knew him. Suddenly. After they had already had walked away from Jerusalem, traveling seven miles with this man, sat down to a meal with him, finally they realized, Damn, what was I thinking? <laughs> Come on, that's what they would have thought if it was today. You know, we, we put it in our texting attitude today. What was I thinking? <laughs> Their eyes were opened and they knew him and he vanished out of their sight. Whoa! You know, yeah, he was. <laughs> you know, the, the good part of that is, he knew at that point they didn't need any more help right then. Think about it. How do I know that? Listen to the next verse. And they said, and they said, one to another, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way? How many times have God's children walked away from Jerusalem and been walking down the road to Emmaus and they haven't been to a church service in, in weeks or sometimes months and they go into a church service like this church service this morning and the Holy Spirit of God begins to speak to their heart and their heart begins to burn and burn within them and they know where they are. They know they're on the road to Emmaus. They know they have walked away from what God wanted them to do. They know they have walked away from Jerusalem. They know that and their heart burns. Maybe you're here this morning and your heart is burning within you. Listen to what it says. Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us? By the way, and while he opened to us the scriptures. How many of you know the word of God is powerful and sharper than any yes. two yes. 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 When you're on the road to, to Emmaus, the one thing that will set you on fire Amen. is this right here. Amen. 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 Yes. It really will. Come on, preacher. Amen, but listen. Listen to verse 33. This is the one I like. They made a decision. Because they didn't just determine that he was the Lord. 
They didn't just determine that he had broken the bread of life to them, that had shared the word of God, but they made a decision. Yeah. And that's the decision I'm looking for from you this morning. Here's the decision. They rose up the same hour and returned to where? The teaching of their peace. They went back to where it all started. They went back to that place where they had learned about the Lord. They went back to that place where they had met the Lord. They had went back to that place where they had fellowship with Him, where they walked with Him, where they had faith in Him, where they saw His miracle. They returned to the Jerusalem they left when they got over there. Oh, they, didn't wait. they didn't wait three days. They didn't wait two weeks. These men had just walked seven miles from Jerusalem to Emmaus. Turn around and walk seven more right straight back. Amen. Here they go right back the other way. Let's don't stop there. There's a couple more verses. In there. Amen. And they rose up that same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together. They went right back to where they lived. The teaching of their peace. They went right back to their peace. Their, their faith was reborn within them. And what happened? They found the other eleven. Uh, that were, and the others that were with them. And their testimony. Look at their testimony. Look at a testimony from somebody who has just returned from the maiden. The Lord is risen and hath appeared to Simon. And they told what things were done in the way and how he was known of them in the breaking of bread. They began to testify of what they experienced. They began to tell others what they experienced on the road to Emmaus and when they got to Emmaus. And the fact that that made them turn around and come back to Jerusalem, the city of peace, the city of David. Folk, listen this morning. You can be on the road to Emmaus. Christians, I've been there, and I'm sure that you have. But the thing is, when you realize where you are, what God wants you to do is drop what you're doing, turn around and go back to Amen. 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 You know what verse 36 says? This is the best part. <laughs> I love this one. They showed up in Jerusalem. They met with the disciples. <coughs> they told them what had happened on the road to Emmaus. And while they were telling them that, they were in a locked room. Yeah. Amen. Come on now for yeah. fear. Bible, I can, I can teach you that in the Word of God. <laughs> Look at verse 36. And as they spake, Jesus himself. Stood in. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You get back to the mass of Jerusalem and you can meet the Lord. A manifestation of the Holy Ghost of God can perform in your presence just like you do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But it's the same distance back from him as it was to him. You know that, right? Keep hearing the Lord say it. We're standing on the holy ground. Amen. You better get that one word. God is saying to us this morning as we're standing on holy ground that we should bring our petitions and lay them in. I 
I have seen your weeping. 